Hi, this is Stu Schwartz from MasterMathMentor.com. This is video AB33. The topic is Straight Line Motion Revisited, and it covers the AB manual pages 195 and 196. In the first part of the course, studying differential calculus, we worked on straight line motion. We talked about the position function, which described where on a straight line a particle was based upon time t. The velocity was the change of position over time, which was v of t, and that was defined as s prime of t. And the acceleration, a of t, was the derivative of v of t, v prime of t, or s double prime of t. We can now reverse the process in integral calculus, saying that s of t is the integral of v of t dt plus c, and v of t is equal to the integral of a of t dt plus c. In problems 1 through 3, you are given the acceleration function a of t and a velocity at time 0, sometimes called the initial velocity, and you are asked to find the velocity function. In number 1, you're told that a of t equals 4t minus 6, and v0 is equal to 3. So v of t is the integral of 4t minus 6 dt, which we know is 2t squared minus 6t plus c. We plug in the value of 0, and we get v of 0 is equal to 0 plus c, but that is equal to 3, and that makes c equal to 3. So therefore, v of t is equal to 2t squared minus 6t plus 3. In number 2, you're given that a of t equals sine of t plus 2t, and v of 0 is equal to 5. So v of t is equal to the integral of sine t plus 2t dt, which is equal to negative cosine t plus t squared plus c. Plugging in 0, we get v of 0 equals negative 1 plus c equals 5, making c equal to 6, and therefore v of t is equal to 6 minus cosine t plus t squared. In number 3, we're told that a of t equals e, of e to the t plus t, and v of 0 is equal to negative 1. So the velocity is the integral of e to the t plus t dt, which we know is e to the t plus t squared over 2 plus c. v of 0 is 1 plus c, and we know that that is equal to negative 1, and therefore c is equal to negative 2. Therefore, our velocity function is e of t plus t squared over 2 minus 2. Suppose the blue dot represents a vehicle traveling along a straight road. Observe its motion. You can see that the vehicle traveled 80 miles to the right, stopped and turned, and then traveled 60 miles to the left. We now define two terms. First, displacement. The displacement is the difference in distance between where you start and where you stop. Displacement can be positive or negative or zero. A displacement of zero means you stop at the same position you start. So in the above example, the displacement is 20 as you end up 20 miles to the right of where you started. The second term is distance. Distance is how far you travel between time A and time B. Distance is always positive. So in the above example, the distance is 140 as you travel a total of 80 plus 60 miles. So if we are given a velocity function, which is always positive, we know that the distance and displacement will be the same. But if the velocity function is not always positive, we must find the time interval when the velocity is negative, meaning that the particle is moving backwards. So we can find the distance traveled in that dis interval 
and subtract it, which means we're subtracting a negative number or adding a positive one. So this can be summarized by the statement in the yellow block. If we are given a particle traveling along a straight line with velocity v of t on some time interval a to b, the displacement is simply the interval from a to b of v of t dt, while the distance is the interval from a to b of the absolute value of v of t dt. In number four, we are told that we have a particle moving along a straight line with velocity t squared minus 7t plus 10, and we would like to find its displacement over the interval 1 to 7. Although a graph is not necessary to do this problem, we show it to show the nuances of what is going on. The displacement will be the area under the curve, and we see that the velocity is positive between 1 and 2, then negative between 2 and 5, and then positive between 5 and 7, meaning that the particle is moving to the right, and then moving to the left, and then moving to the right. So the displacement should be positive because there is more area above the x-axis than below the x-axis. Regardless of the graph, the displacement is the integral from 1 to 7 of t squared minus 7t plus 10 dt. We integrate and get t cubed over 3 minus 7t squared over 2 plus 10t evaluated from 1 to 7. Doing the math, we get 343 over 3 minus 343 over 2 plus 70 minus the quantity 1 third minus 7 halves plus 10, and we get an answer as expected, a positive answer of 6. In number 5, we are given the exact same velocity, v of t equals t squared minus 7t plus 10, over the same time interval, 1 through 7 but we are now asked to find the distance traveled. The graph is of help here. We see that anything that was below the axis is now flipped above the axis, meaning that there are three separate areas that we need to find, from 1 to 2, from 2 to 5, and 5 to 7. Without the benefit of the graph, we realize that the distance will be the integral from 1 to 7 of the absolute value of t squared minus 7t plus 10 dt. In order to do this, we factor t squared minus 7t plus 10 into t minus 2 t minus 5, and we're interested in whether, whether that is positive. We find that it is positive when t is less than 2 and when t is greater than 5. So we need to split this into three integrals. The first integral will be from 1 to 2 of the velocity. The second integral will be from 2 to 5 of the velocity, and we're going to have to subtract that because the area is, is negative. And then we will then have the third integral, which will run from 5 to 7 of the velocity function. This gives t cubed over 3 minus 7t squared over 2 plus 10t evaluated from 1 to 2 minus the expression t cubed over 3 minus 7t squared over 2 plus 10t evaluated from 2 to 5. And then finally, we add t cubed over 3 minus 7t squared over 2 plus 10t evaluated from 5 to 7. The arithmetic is a pain. We have to plug in our numbers, being particularly careful about signs. Notice that the middle expression has a negative bracket, because within that bracket, there will be one, of ex one expression minus another expression. In doing the calculations, we see that we have expressions over 3, expressions with a fraction over 2, and then integers. I suggest that you 
work with the denominators of 3, then the denominators of 2, and then finally the integers. You do not see cancellations even though you do see the same numbers. This is very typical for this type of problem. The cancellations would occur when we were doing displacement, not in distance. Finally, we add up all our thirds, all our halves, and all our integers, and we get a final answer of 15. I suggest you do this on the calculator as a verification. And since the calculator can take a look at the integral of a absolute, an absolute value expression, you can do it that way. For number six, we are given the acceleration function as the square root of t measured in feet per second squared, and v of zero equals negative 18 on the interval t equals zero to t equals 16, and we're asked to find the displacement and distance of a particle moving along a straight line. We are given the acceleration, so first we must find the velocity which is the integral of t to the one-half dt, which we know is two-thirds t to the three-halves plus c. Using the fact that v of zero equals negative 18, we get v of zero is equal to zero plus c, which is equal to negative 18, making c equal to negative 18, and our velocity is two-thirds t to the three-halves minus 18. No need for a graph. We can immediately say that the displacement is the integral from 0 to 16 of 2 thirds t to the 3 halves minus 18 dt. Integrating, we get 4 fifteenths t to the 5 halves minus 18 t, evaluated from 0 to 16. And that gives us 4 fifteenths times 1,024 minus 18 times 16 and we get negative 14.933 feet. Displacement negative means that our particle is to the left of where we started, assuming that we're moving along a horizontal line. To find the distance traveled, we first have to find when the velocity is positive. Setting 2 thirds t to the 3 halves minus 18 greater than zero, we get t to the 3 halves is greater than 27, and that gives us t is greater than 27 to the 2 thirds power, meaning that t is greater than 9. Our distance, we know, is the integral from 0 to 16 of the absolute value of 2 thirds t to the 3 halves minus 18 dt. So we can now break this up into two integrals. The uh, velocity is negative between 0 and 9, so our distance will be negative integral from 0 to 9 of 2 thirds t to the 3 halves minus 18 dt. Plus, when it's positive, the integral from 9 to 16 of 2 thirds t to the 3 halves minus 18 dt. We can integrate, and in the first integral, we can reverse the order and write that as 18t minus 4 fifteenths t to the 5 halves evaluated from 0 to 9 plus 4 fifteenths t to the 5 halves minus 18t evaluated from 9 to 16. Doing the math, and it is messy, we get an answer of 179.467 feet. Our graph confirms that our displacement will be slightly negative as there is slightly more area below the x-axis than above the x-axis. Number seven reads, a subway train accelerates as it leaves one station and then decelerates as it approaches another station. The table shown measures the velocity, v, in miles per hour at five second time intervals. Our first task is to find the distance the train travels every five seconds and complete the table. To complete the table, we will use the trapezoidal rule for every five second interval. 
realize that t is measured in seconds and v is measured in miles per hour, so we're going to have to convert seconds into hours. For the first entry between 0 and 5 seconds, we find that our trapezoidal rule will give one half of five seconds. The conversion factor is one hour over 3600 seconds times zero plus 15 measured in miles per hour and we end up with 0 0.01 miles. In our second five second interval we have one half of five seconds again multiplying by one hour over 3600 seconds and now we have 15 plus 33 miles per hour and doing the math we get 0 0.033 miles we can continue the pattern through the entire table to find the actual distance between the two stations we could add up all our results in the table or utilize our trapezoidal rule, which says that the distance will be one half of five, again multiplying by one hour over 3600 seconds, and utilizing our trapezoidal rule, we have zero plus two times 15 plus two times 33 plus two times 42 plus dot 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 plus two times eight plus zero miles per hour, and we will end up with 0.526 miles.